This is what happens when I let myself go on a shopping spree. You get months worth of uh, in-the-mail material. So let's get started on the fourth episode in a row showing the stuff I get from China. The first items we're looking at are these two blower fans. These kind of uh, blower fans work by sucking in air from this side and then blowing it out of this side channel. They're usually found in applications where there is a space constraint on the height of the enclosure. So for example in uh, laptop computers where the air needs to be sucked in through the bottom and blown out through the side vents. But this could also be helpful in a variety of hobby projects where the same constraints might apply. So I decided to get a couple of these. They are uh, one hung low brand, so I don't expect um, too much uh, service life out of them. But if I ever um, need something more reliable, I'll, I'll get something like a Sunon from my local distributor. I have this uh, smaller one, which is uh, 12 volts, uh, 0.14 amps rated. This one is 40 millimeter across and just 15 millimeters in height. Uh, it should have 19 to 25 dB noise level, 15 to 30 uh, cubic feet of air, and um, 3000 to 7500 RPM. These specs are taken from the eBay listing and they seem to be, I don't know, all over the place with very wide ranges. So I don't think they're the exact specs for this model. Maybe they sell multiple uh, models and they just have a single description for all of them and they extended the, the range for those uh, specs. And the second one, slightly bigger, it's uh, 5 volts rated, 0.25 amps, 60 millimeters across, the same 15 millimeters in height, 3500 RPM, uh, 2.6 uh, cubic uh, feet, plus or minus 10% on these specs. So this one from uh, GDT brand seems to have a more accurate uh, specification sheet, also taken from the eBay description. There will be links for both of these in the description below, so check them out. Also from the same one hung low factory, I got this 50 millimeter cooling fan. 5 volts rated. I have some good 50mm cooling fans from Sunon. They are reliable, good specs, but they weren't in stock for the 5 volt version at my distributor. So I got this one from eBay in case I am forced to use a 5 volt fan inside uh, some project. This one is probably not as good, probably doesn't push air as efficiently as the uh, Sunon ones, but it will have to do for now. For my upcoming dummy load project that I keep mentioning, but I don't actually get to make it already, I've also got some 50mm uh, fan grills because I'm going to use these um, uh, Sunon fans or maybe one of these one hung low fans. Uh, I need to use these uh, grills just to uh, protect the cooling fans like this on the back panel of the enclosure. You can get these in all sizes on eBay, they're quite cheap. And they're a nice addition to any project because it will protect the fan from any objects entering it or uh, it might also protect your fingers from the fan blades. I also got a couple of uh, these big heat sinks. They are 150 millimeters by 60 by 25 millimeters made out of uh, aluminium. They're great for any project that needs cooling. Let's check the weight of these so you can get a feel of uh, how much aluminium you're getting. So it's roughly 150 grams. Let's check this other one. Yeah, they're practically identical, just uh, one gram difference between, uh, between them. And that might be the error on, uh, on the scale that I'm using. These come in a pack of two on Banggood for around $8 with free shipping. And that's why I got two of them. One of them has this uh, small uh, dent from shipping, just this outer fin. But I was expecting that and it's nothing too bad. In fact, every single heatsink that I got from China arrived with some kind of dent from shipping. Well, except for the small ones, those usually arrive in good shape. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them in the dummy load project, but I got them for a good price. It's nice to have them anyway. I'm sure sooner or later they're going to be used in some project, but for now they will just go into my heatsink bin. Next item, also some heatsinks.
These are TO220 style heatsinks. They have a couple of pins for vertical mounting on a PCB. They're about uh, 30 millimeters and should do fine with dissipating uh, small loads like uh, something between 1 or 3 watts. I was checking with my uh, in my heatsink parts box and I noticed I don't have anything of this size and I kind of needed something like this for a 7812 linear regulator in a project I was working on. So I ordered this set of 5. They seem to be of decent quality and uh, once again let's check their weight. Roughly 10 grams. So yeah, I'm happy with them. I think they're a good purchase and there will be links in the description for these. I also got some of these 100 watt wire wound resistors with aluminum case. They are great for a high power dissipation projects. You stick these to a heatsink and they can transfer all that heat efficiently to the heatsink. I ordered them in a few different values and uh, I would like to use them to build myself uh, a resistive load. Basically I plan to attach these to a large heatsink, maybe with some 4mm banana sockets for easy connection and uh, I might even add a cooling fan to increase the power dissipation of the system even further. Then I could use these to test some power supplies or other gear with a, uh, a simple resistive load and having these uh, different values next to each other on a heatsink means I could connect them in series or parallel to obtain other intermediate values as well. Every lab should have one of these uh, resistive loads. I don't have one so far, so that's why I'm going to build one soon. And I will, of course, make a video about that uh, when I get started working on that project. Next item probably looks familiar because it's the same type of plastic enclosure I used on the bench power supply project. So let me open this uh, plastic packaging. At that time I knew I wanted to build a DIY dummy load and I wasn't sure if I should build it in the same type of enclosure as the power supply. I mean it would look nice uh, when I stack them on top of each other because um, um, they will be in sim similar, uh, they will be exactly the same size but I would have preferred something metallic for the dummy load project. So I've got this uh, second enclosure to choose from. Uh, maybe uh, I could get some feedback from you guys. Which one do you think I should uh, use for a dummy load project? The white plastic one or this uh, second blue metallic one? They're both nice but I'm kind of uh, preferring this uh, metallic one for the dummy load project. I think it would uh, look uh, very nice. The plastic one would sure be easier to work with for drilling and uh, cutting the uh, required slots in the front panel. But I will also have to consider the heatsink I'm going to be using and I have a couple of choices to make there as well. And it all has to fit inside the enclosure. So I'm going to think about it until I start working on that project. But please leave your ideas in the comment section below. Next item, a rather simple but very useful product. Rubber feet or bumps, whatever you are used to calling these. The fact is the majority of the enclosures I got from China come with no feet at all and some come with some form of plastic feet that just slide around on flat surfaces or even worse when you try to stack those enclosures on top of each other. So it's a good idea to have a set of these to install on the projects you make on their enclosure just to make things a bit nicer, a bit more user friendly. These ones are 16 millimeters in diameter. I wanted something bigger just to have a good grip and they're supposed to have a 3M adhesive backing. So if that's genuine, they should stick quite well without ever falling off. I'll put a link to these in the description below. It's definitely something you want to have on your next project. These are a couple of LM2596 DC to DC step down converters. These are classic, everyone knows them. Uh, they can accept up to 35 volts input adjustable output up to 3 amps. They keep appearing in my videos because they're used in projects or in repairs and I need new ones from time to time. I'm not sure if these are genuine LM2596 or they're just some other silicon inside the package and they come from the grey market in Shenzhen but that's kind of difficult to find out without uh, decapping the actual IC so I'm not going to even attempt to do that. 
mainly because I don't have a proper microscope and because nitric acid is very difficult to obtain here as an individual, probably for good reasons. These won't be used in uh, critical projects, so I don't worry much about their uh, reliability. If I have anything critical, I'll just uh, use a uh, ready-made uh, DC to DC uh, module from Texas Instruments, or I can roll my own with components bought from a well-known distributor. And our next item is another DC to DC module, but this time a back boost module based on the XL6009. Because it's a back boost module, it can step down and also step up the input voltage according to our needs. This can be extremely helpful in uh, scenarios where your input comes from something like a photovoltaic panel, which will output a different voltage depending on the sunlight uh, it gets. So you could use a module like this to get a regulated 12 volts output from an input swinging from let's say 5 up to 32 volts. Of course, the efficiency will vary, it can't be constant across the whole range of input voltages, but at the output you will always get 12 volts. I never actually needed such a converter in my projects, that's probably because I haven't made any solar powered project yet, but still a useful converter to have in my bin of power supply modules, links will be in the description as well. Some of you probably already know what this is, at least it has been shown here before. It's a battery protection circuit, in this case a 10 amp 3S protection module, although according to the eBay specs the working current is only 8 amps maximum with 10 amps peaks accepted. This thing when properly connected to a 3S battery pack will protect it from short circuit, overcharge, over discharge and over current. It can do that because it measures the voltage of each cell as well as the current through the whole pack using this shunt resistor and it can cut off with the help of these uh, MOSFETs if conditions exceed the ratings. What it doesn't have is temperature protection, but I've checked the datasheet of the IC on this board and it uh, doesn't implement such a protection feature. So here are the other battery protection modules that I got, they all use different chips for achieving the same level of protection and most are switchable between 3 and 4 cell protection mode. These are often advertised as charging modules on eBay and that's not exactly true, although you could implement a rather crude and unsafe charger using one of these modules. Let's take for example a 3S battery pack made out of 18650 cells. You could for example supply something like 12.6 volts to a module like this, limited to a current of let's say 1 amp. So the module will let the voltage of each cell rise up to 4.275 volts and the charging current will be limited by the uh, input current of 1 amp and then it will cut off using the MOSFETs and that's fine in terms of maximum voltage accepted for an 18650 cell. However, the module could potentially kick back in and restart the charging process once the voltage of a cell naturally comes down to 4.075 volts. These are all figures from the datasheet of the actual chip used on this module. And there is also the problem of terminating the charge of a lithium cell, which should happen when the current drops below a certain threshold or um, if a certain time period expires, not necessarily when the cell reaches uh, 4.275 volts. So I will be building a 3S pack soon for a project and I think I might be charging it under supervision using this method, but it's definitely not recommended and it might shorten the life of the battery or even set them on fire if they're left unattended. I have these assortment of Zener diodes, a pack in a through hole package DO35 style and a pack in SMD MELF package style. 310 pieces, 31 values, 10 pieces each on the through hole pack and 220 pieces, 22 values, 10 pieces each in the SMD pack. These are useful, they are used in all kinds of different circuits and since I find myself working with both through hole and SMD, I had to get them both. I didn't get them as an assortment kit complete with a plastic box because I have a couple of those and I, I will make my own assortment kit at home. No doubt you've heard me before talking about assortment kits and um, their importance in the lab. I often find myself going to one of these kits whenever I'm prototyping whenever I'm prototyping something or even when I'm repairing something. 
So every electronics lab should have some basic assortments uh, of diodes, resistors, capacitor, LEDs and some mechanical stuff like screws and nuts. So links for these assortments of Zener diodes will be in the description below. And the last item from today's episode, we have some PT4115 ICs. This IC is basically a DC to DC step down converter designed to drive single or multiple LEDs in series. It works with an input voltage between 6 and 30 volts and can output up to 1.2 amps. What makes this circuit interesting is the fact that it can limit the output current by using an external shunt resistor in series with the LED string. And it also has a dim pin which can accept either a DC voltage or a pulse input to control the brightness of the LED string. I don't remember where I first saw this IC. It could have been in a YouTube video or a teardown or something, something similar, but I realized I need to have some of these around because they're cheap and they can easily drive some LEDs when needed. That was all for today. As usual, links for all of the items shown in this video will be in the description below, so check them out. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Thank you.